All right, Dave, I'd like to welcome you back to our filming, Thanks, Dave. our YouTube videos, and weathering our Sherman this, this season. Uh, Dave's going to, I think, weather the trucks today and, and show us some using pigments and um, all kinds of different things this morning, weathering on top of some of the decals. And, and Dave, I'm behind the scenes. Lately, I've been working on our groundwork for our little project. Great. Yep. Um, of which, on our next episode, um, I'm going to get into the plastering and um, adding all the stones and groundwork to this. So it's going to be a nice, it's going to be a great season. And um, thanks so much for doing it for us. Oh, oh my really, pleasure. Really appreciate it. A lot of fun. It's I'll let you fun. take it away. Thank you. Thanks, David. Thanks. So for uh, for the uh, for the next uh, video we're going to be doing here, we're going to focus on doing um, weathering up the and putting mud on the running gear here. Uh, so this side is already done, uh, and then what we'll do is we'll look at uh, completing this side um, today. As you can see, there's uh, there's no pigment or mud or anything. Uh, and then in subsequent videos, we'll we'll look at doing maybe some uh, some chipping, um, some other washes, maybe getting some of the of the, the mud and whatnot, getting it uh, up on some of the higher areas of the tank, um, just to you know incorporate everything in. Uh, and then ultimately build up to uh, getting it onto that base that uh, Dave just showed us. So, so what I'd like to uh, start off with, though, is uh, when I'm when I have a subject, and I'm thinking about uh, how to you know how to weather it and how much mud to put on it and whatnot. Um, there's nothing uh, nothing beats uh, reference photos. Uh, and for example, there's uh, I've got this uh, uh, Sherman book here, Son of Sherman, Volume One. This is a fantastic reference for uh, for all things Sherman. Um, and in this, you know, as this is a, an out of the box uh, model, and, and really this was meant just for kind of um, proving out and doing some and showing some some weathering and finishing techniques. Um, but there are some great um, shots here of Shermans and in various situations. And this picture here in particular, um, I think, is great because it, it gives a close up. It shows you know how much mud you have. Uh, on, on the, the running gear here, the road wheels, uh, how much uh, is, you know, how much you have streaking behind here on the, on the hull of the vehicle, uh, some of the splash marks that come up uh, as a result, uh, some of the streaking effects. So it kind of, you know, it's nice to see this because it kind of validates everything that we're, we're, we're doing on the tank and gives us something to aim for. It gives us uh, a good, um, uh, a good model to, uh, to 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 finish or to, to emulate in terms of how uh, how we want the weathering to look. So, uh, and another great source of reference for uh, all things Sherman are these Forgotten Archives books. This is the second one in the series. Uh, there's there's two so far, uh, and the same thing with this. There is all kinds of great great pictures of of Shermans with uh, you know again in various states of repair, knocked out in operations and whatnot. And all kinds of uh, weathering ideas that you can get, and, and you can see there's quite a range. Where this one here has obviously a lot of uh, a lot of mud seems to have gotten mired down in some soft uh, terrain here, uh, and then a few pages over, uh, we have some Shermans that maybe are in a in a city setting that maybe don't have quite as much uh, mud on them. So again, you can kind of get an idea, look, find a subject that you know appeals to you in some way, or if you're trying to situate a specific model with markings uh, in, a, in a specific time and place historically, uh, you know, you can look at getting pictures that can really give you a good guiding hand in terms of how to, uh, how far uh, to take things or not. So, so great references, if you can, if you can get your hands on them, they're, uh, I think they're absolutely uh, worthwhile. Okay, so what we'll do is uh, we'll get set up here and we'll start, uh, we'll start working on uh, the uh, unfinished side uh, here of the running. Okay, so before we begin, I thought maybe I'd go over the uh, the inventory of products that I'm going to be using uh, in uh, in the upcoming video here. Um, so first of all, uh, we need pigments, uh, and what I like to do is I like to mix um, three different shades of, of pigment here. So I've got the uh, I've, I've got three jars with three colors from the uh, the Mig Ammo line of pigments. Any pigments uh, will do. Um, and I've got uh, Dark Earth for a darker color. You can kind of see the color there is a little bit darker. Uh, we've got Light Dust, which is the lightest color of the three. And then we've got an intermediate color of uh, Europe Earth. And if you could use a single color. Um, like for example, you, know, you might get away with just using the, the, the middle tone here of, of Europe Earth. But I'd like to have uh, some variation in it. So 
I'll take equal amounts um, of, the, of the three pigments, I'll mix them together, uh, but I don't mix them too finely uh, so that it's not a complete mix, so that in some cases you might get a bit of the, you know, the dark earth showing up more, or you might get some of the light dust showing up more, or, or the middle tone showing up more, and it just keeps that variation going. Um, and then, so these are kind of the, the, the critical items. Um, to fix the pigments, I like to use the, uh, the Tamiya uh, X28 thinner. And uh, you can apply it in, in a couple of ways. Um, you can use, uh, you know, you can just sort of use a damp brush and use capillary action to kind of draw onto the, uh, onto the pigments. Um, but that can get a little bit messy. Um, you can use a little pipette um, to take some out of the, uh, the bottle and just drop uh, onto, the, uh, onto the area that you want to fix. Or a more precise way of doing it is if you can get one of these little um, applicators, and I got this from, uh, from FlexiFile. Uh, so this is just uh, in, in this jar, in this bottle here, it's just a mix 20 thinner that I've, that I've put in. And then there's like a syringe type of top here. Oh, that's not supposed to come off. That, you know, will apply very specific amount, very precise amount uh, to a specific area. So uh, it keeps the mess down. Um, you end up using less thinner uh, as, as a result. And, and it's just a much more precise application. So this is this has become my new favorite tool for uh, for fixing uh, pigments. Then I've got a um, I like to use uh, kind of like a heavy mud to kind of uh, as a foundation to fix everything too. Uh, and there's a bunch of different products. Uh, there's a bunch of different Vallejo products, uh, MIG products, um, AK, and really all it is is just kind of a textured um, enamel-based product. I don't know if you can see in here, but it's like almost like a thick paste. So what I'll do is I'll just dip a, a, a rough paintbrush in here and then stipple that onto the model to create some, um, some texture for the, the pigments to, uh, to adhere to, to give it a bit of volume. Um, but there's all kinds, of, uh, all kinds of products and colors and, and, and whatnot, so a lot, uh, a lot to choose from. And then I've got these, uh, so these are AK, pro these are AK uh, earth effect, mud effect uh, enamels. And what these are, again, everything's based off of enamels here. And these are thicker, um, obviously not as thick as, as the mud here. They're not, they're not a paste, but they're kind of a thick saturated enamels that, uh, that I like to use to, um, uh, you know, I'll put these on the model, then I'll, put the, I'll fix the pigments, I'll, I'll put pigments on top of them, I'll go over all this in detail, of course. Uh, and then I can also add these after to create some stains and some variation <clears throat> in, in the pigments, and I'll, I'll go through all that in great detail. And then over here, we have some, and these are, the same type of thing, enamel products, but these are thicker still, probably in between the consistency you would see here and what you would see with uh, with a mud type of product where, where this is a paste. Uh, and this is this is like a uh, this here is medium density mud splashes. So the I think the intent for this is really to use it to put it on the end of a paintbrush and flick and create some of those speckled effects that we saw in uh, one of the photos here from the book. Uh, and I've got three different um, tones. Again, I, I like to work in, in threes or fours if I can. Um, and then over here, we have uh, an old grease. This is uh, from the Wilder, Adam Wilder line of products. Uh, and this will use to create uh, stains on some of the road wheels or some of the, uh, uh, you know, the show like a blown uh, gasket or something where you have some, you see a lot of them on, on the, um, uh, vehicles and whatnot where through the mud, there'll be like a grease stain that's oozing out and it adds a nice, uh, a nice uh, uh, detail uh, to your weathering. So let's get started with mixing up the, uh, so I'll put all these aside, get these out of your way. I like to use these uh, little cocktail shot glasses. I get these from, uh, from a dollar store and I think they're 50 for like a buck 25. I'm sure you can get them at uh, various uh, party stores or whatnot. And they're just a, like a clear plastic cup and they're great for for mixing paints or mixing pigments, um, and they're disposable, which is nice. I don't have to worry about cleaning them up. So what I'll do is I'll start off with the Europe Earth here, and just use my my trusty Tamiya paint stirrer. I'll just go in and get, you know, throw in a couple of scoops. Right again, you don't have to be. This is precisely imprecise. Start off with that. And then I'll take the same amounts from the other two colors. I'll get some dark earth. Do the same thing. Scoop that up, mix that in. And just one more. There we go. 
And then we'll get the lighter color, which is the light dust. And again, um, I mentioned this earlier, but any, you know, if you've got some of the old original MIG pigments lying around, um, those are good. Uh, Leo has pigments, uh, Ammo has pigments, AK, I don't know if AK has pigments. Uh, Aptaling is coming up with a range of pigments. I think it's just a repop of the old MIG payment, the pigments, I believe. But they're all, uh, they're all good, so. So I've got the mix of the three, so I'll just mix them around. But again, not, just to break up some of the, some of the chunks. And then we've got, then we've got our color. And you can see, I don't know if you can see in there, but it's not, you know, it's not thoroughly, thoroughly, thoroughly mixed, but it's mixed enough where it's, there's, you know, you'll get some slight variations uh, uh, in, in you know, where you'll get more of the light dust or more of the dark earth type of thing. So, okay, so that's the first thing important. Now what we'll do uh, is we'll go over to a detailed view and I'll start applying uh, some of this. Okay. So here's the, uh, um, here's the side that I've already finished. Um, so you can see um, that, you know, all this uh, is the application of, of mud and pigment on top of it. Um, and you can see uh, some of the uh, splashes uh, and, and whatnot inside. And you can see that there's a nice, there's a nice variety to the tone of mud because that's how it kind of looks like in real life. Um, so the, the process starts by applying some of this... Um, where did she go now? Here we go. Applying some of this this mud to start building up texture in in various areas, probably more on the side of the hull than on the actual um, bogies themselves. Uh, and then once that's uh, ready to go, we'll look at applying um, some pigment. So this is our mix of the three colors, uh, and we'll apply that with uh, with a brush. <clears throat> and then we'll look at fixing that um, with the the X twenty. Uh, thinner here in this uh, in this neat little flexi file applicator, uh, and then we can also look at applying um, various colors of, of mud and earth effects uh, in 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 precise uh, areas and precise locations on the bogies and the hull, and then we can go back and apply the pigments right over it. So you'll see that this is, you know, there there is a bit of an order to this, but um, it, it can be a bit of an iterative process, particularly when it's, it comes time to start you know, applying these earth effects and then the pigments on top of that, and then earth effects back on top of the pigments, and you can, and that's the nice part about this is that you can work at this in such a way that uh, uh, allows you to go back and and make touch ups if you're not quite happy with a specific area, you can go back and touch it up again uh, until you get it to a point that uh, that you're satisfied with it. And and again, I think the key here is to have you know, that variety where, you know, here you'll have, uh, this might be a little bit wetter, uh, a little bit wet here, a little bit drier here, a little bit drier in there, a little bit wetter in there, um, just to kind of mix things up. And then we can go back and add some some oil and grease stains to, you know, to add more uh, more visual interest and detail as well. Okay, so let's uh, flip this over to the side of the model that hasn't been done yet. And the first thing to do is to start by applying the, the mud here. So... And it's great to have an old um, brush that you don't care much about anymore. And you can get a detail in there, Robert. You can see that, um, you know, this is pretty, pretty goopy stuff, right? So I'll take a little bit out and I'll just start applying it. These things make great uh, vehicle holders as well. Many uses of those uh, cocktail shot glasses. And I'll just start applying the mud in kind of a random stippling pattern on the hull. Like so, go back and get some more. And there's, you know, like I said before, there's all kinds of different products you can use. Tamiya has a range of textured, uh, they call, I think they call them textured paints that you could use just as well. Right. The nice thing about this, again, this is the, the, the Timia Sherman. You have these poly caps that you can use to pull off, uh, like the sprocket. So you can get in there. And again, it doesn't have to cover everything, just enough to give it a bit of visual interest and texture.
Get in there. So, and again, it depends how many you want to go. If you're and you, and you have to really take into account the type of terrain this is sitting in. So, as we mentioned, this is going to be in the Normandy ter terrain. Um, so, you know, there's a good opportunity to to get a, a good amount of weathering and mud on the vehicle. Uh, if you're doing a desert vehicle, for example, um, you know, you're not going to have as much buildup uh, on that. And in fact, I don't know that I would use mud on a desert vehicle. I think I would probably just use straight pigments. And you'd see a lot more of the uh, of, of the hull underneath, I think. But again, it's all, it's all your interpretation, how you want to do things. So I'll just get a little bit of texture on the bogies, right, just to give it a little something. And you, and you have to, the other thing too is you have to think of the mechanics about this, right? So the track, so when the tank is moving forward, um, uh, the track is uh, moving this way and coming over. Um, so you potentially have, you know, maybe um, a stronger buildup uh, on, on the rear or certainly on the tops of these things. Um, uh, you know, I did... Uh, I worked on a World War I tank, the, the, the Mark I Whippet from, uh, from TACOM. And that has, uh, you know, you see, see pictures, there's a lot of mud and whatnot that kind of falls through the, the sponsons and, and, and whatnot. Um, uh, so, you know, you can look at building maybe a little bit more texture up here because you, know, you have to think how gravity would work in all of this. So I'm just going to add up there. And you can see I'm just not, you know, it's just dabbling. It's not terribly precise. That's the nice thing about this hobby is it's, well, this part of it anyways, you don't have to be, you don't have to be precise at all. Let me just add, just to give it a bit of, so that you're not letting the pigments do all of the work in terms of building up the, um, building up the texture. Okay, and then you may want to go again when you're working on a on a on the weathering. Don't don't neglect. I've I haven't gotten to the underside yet, but I will. Don't neglect the the, the other side, the hidden portion of the of the bogies and the road wheels. You want to make sure you're consistent in applying your weathering there. So let's let's pull off the turret. Uh, let's flip it over, and then we'll go after these pieces here or these parts. Right, and if you get some on a road wheel, and then again because these things are moving, they're con they're in constant motion, so you won't get a terrible amount of buildup, if any at all. You can just sort of wipe it off with the old, the old Mark One thumb and finger there. All right, so I'll just dab that on. Just a matter of. We invested in a uh, in a light here to help. Well, invested. I kind of stole it from my wife. Borrowed it, I guess you would say. So hopefully, hopefully this shows up a little bit better. We did have a we did have a comment, a suggestion in the uh, in the comment section there about using a light. So we we took that to heart. So hopefully this helps. Again, we just. Wipe it off, and you can see it doesn't dry right away. So this, I, this again, I found out the hard way. This is an enamel-based product, but uh, as such, it doesn't. You know, you've got some, you've got some good drying time with it. So you can just sort of wipe off where you don't want it to go. And again, you don't have to be terribly precise because these things got fairly dirty and, and muddy and whatnot. So when you make a mistake like that it kind of adds to the whole the whole story as it were and that's what you're doing here you're kind of building building a bit of a story you know where this vehicle was what type of terrain it fought in uh, you know did the crew have a have time to to clean it or was that important for them in most cases I would guess probably not if you're in combat positions and then because again I, I didn't bother filling in the 
uh, the response in here. So I, I know there's a bit of a gap here, but if there was a solid piece here, which there would be on the real vehicle, I would make sure that that would get pretty muddy because there'd be, you know, if you're getting this type of buildup on the hull here, you would get all kinds of buildup on the spots in here. So underneath the mud guards here, I would kind of build that up a good bit. Same thing here, and then you can't forget your rear of the tank. Again, not a ton, right? Just to build it up, give it a little bit of variation. And then if I'm not happy, if I want to pull some off, I can just rub it off with the finger there. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll hit this with a hair dryer to accelerate the drying time, and then we'll go after it with uh, some pigments. Okay, so I've just used uh, our, our trusty uh, hair dryer here to uh, dry the, the mud. Um, and again, the, 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 you know, if you can get your hands on a hair dryer, if it's your wife, your girlfriend, your significant other, uh, or if you can go to like a, a thrift store, uh, sometimes you can get them there uh, on, on sale for a good price. Um, they're, they're really good. And, and the reason is obviously that, that you don't have to stop and let things dry. Um, unless it's convenient for you, unless you're doing something and it's kind of at the end of your, your evening modeling session and, you, and you're going to hit it back uh, the next day. But if you want to keep moving like we do here, Again, using that hair dryer um, is, is great, uh, so that you you know you can carry on the momentum that you have and, and, and moving forward. So, so now that we've uh, got this uh, dry, we'll start just and again, very. This is kind of the messy part of all of this. We'll go in. We'll get a good amount of pigments on a on an old brush, and just start stippling it on here, like so. And you can see there isn't a lot of science behind how you put it on. But you can see already there's a nice variation in the tones. And again, what you're doing is you're just kind of, you know, we've already done the other side. So, you know, you might want to flip it over every now and again just to see how consistent. Yeah, because you don't want one side more, you know, that has more mud and, and uh, stuff on it than the other side. Um, so just, you know, it's nice to go back and just do a sanity check every now and again, make sure everything's uh, good to go. Always good to do this on a... I uh, laid down a, a paper towel here because this does get quite messy. And just stipple this on as you go. Right here. Actually, maybe we'll do something a little bit different on that particular, on the road wheels. I'll show that in a minute. Okay, so I think, flip it over, and again, don't forget the, don't forget the underside. Let's go back and reclaim some of the pigments that fell in the paper towel.
And again, you can go back and wipe off. Oh, I guess that mud's still a little bit wet. And truth be told, you could probably apply the pigments onto the wet mud. I don't think that would alter things greatly. It might even give you some nice cool effects. It's all about the cool effects. And let's do flip it over and then do the underside of the vehicle here. And again, like you'll see, you know, for example, here there's an area where we didn't really get any mud on it, and the pigment doesn't really have anything to kind of stick to. Don't worry about that. We'll we'll cover that off in a little bit. I'll show you what you can do there. The nice part about what I'm showing you here is that you can always go back and adjust. There's ways to, to do that. So let's get all this off. I'm just going to blow this off here. Okay. So now, as you can see, we've got some nice, we've laid down some, some pigment and you can already start to see that you know, there's already a, a variation in the tones and the color here. You've got some lighter areas here, some darker areas that would, uh, you know, denote uh, drier mud versus wet mud. Um, so now what we're going to do is we're going to go and use our trusty little pigment fixer applicator. And again, this is simply uh, X20. And then all I do is just touch. And you can see how that kind of just spreads out on its own. All right, very, again, precisely imprecise. Oh, I forgot to get some pigment up there. I'll go back and fix that. And you're just dabbing the stuff. So if you were, you know, if you were, I used to use droppers a lot. So with a dropper, much less control. Uh, you can do it. It still works, but um, you're using more uh, more fixer than, than you really need to. Uh, you can also use a brush too. Just take a dab a little bit in a brush and touch it to the areas that you want to fix. So you can see hardly any at all. So the nice part about this is you really, you really kind of just use what you need. And again, if you miss an area and you don't fix it and it ends up coming off, you can always go back and reapply. It's not a big deal. And let's go under here, same type of thing. Just So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back and get some more pigment. So I mentioned I forgot this area here, so I'll go and just and we'll muddy it. We'll add a little bit more than we maybe have in other areas, just because this would be a logical place for, for mud to build up. Uh, yeah, and then go back with the pigment. So you can see it's a very iterative process. There I might want to apply a little bit more because the a fixer because the application of the pigment was a little thicker there. There. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to my trusty hair dryer, uh, hit this, uh, hit dry this off, and, and then we'll come back and we'll, uh, we'll look at the next. Okay. Steps. So we've uh, we've hit the the pigment um, and the fixer with the uh, with the hair dryer to uh, kind of dry it out. So you can see here. You know, we're starting to see some some nice variations in the in the level of uh, dryness and wetness of the of the mud. Uh, represented by the, the pigments we've applied to it and the, again the underlying um, mud paste that we put on but you can see that there's still like for example here you know we didn't get anything in, in, in this little area here on the bogey same thing over here uh, and then we have so we still have to do the insides of the of the various road wheels uh, here so what I wanted to show you is another way of, uh, of applying pigments and that's by using uh, these uh, earth effects here uh, this one. So let's use uh, let's use dark mud. So you can see the color here is, is again it's you know very consistent with the other tones that we're using here. So shake that up good. 
So this is if you want to do maybe a more precise application of pigment. So what I'll do is I'll dip, I'll get a little bit of this dark mud and I'll just paint inside this rear wheel here. Okay, well, maybe I'll do this one here. Actually, no, sorry, I'll show you here. So you can actually paint this in to the areas that you want to get maybe a little bit more pigment on. And even, like for example, I don't know if you can see in here, like nothing, like nothing, we haven't gotten any mud or anything on that. So again, you know, you want to be a little bit precise. You can go in there and paint. So what this does is this provides a nice base for the pigment to adhere to. So we'll go back, pick up some, some pigment and just dab that on. All right, blow the excess off. And then go back in and then hit you know, this area here. So the pigment will really only stick to the wet areas. So again, it's another way of just getting a more precise. All right, and just blow the excess off. And I found that there's really no need to go over this again with a fixer because the, the enamel product almost acts as a bit of a, a fixer. So, um, yeah, so a nice, nice easy way of, you know, doing a more precise application of, of, of pigments. So let's go back in there and hit that with a little bit more. And then maybe, again, you can use your, your finger just to maybe, just like I did on the other side here, where you can see a little bit of a, a little bit of the green show through. Again, maybe because it sits proud and it would get wiped off or would accumulate more mud. Um, but just, you know, you can just kind of go and wipe that off with the finger there just to show a little bit of the, the green poking through and maybe the same thing with the with the tops of these things here. All right, just to take some of that off. Because there's some nice, you know, there's some nice fe features to these bogies here, so you don't want to cover everything up in mud. And maybe brings it in more to scale, as it were. There you go. So let's do that again. Now let's go into one of the road wheels. So let's pick this guy here. So we'll just add, we'll just dab this on. Again, here. And the nice part is any areas that you're not able to get pigment onto for whatever reason, you still have the, you know, the base dark mud color of this product so that you can eliminate some gaps. Again, not a, not a very precisely imprecise, as I like to say. Dig that in there. Because you want, you, know, you want everything to be consistent, right? So if you're, if the sides of your hull here and your bogies have mud, well, chances are your road wheels are gonna have mud because they're always moving, always getting mud on them. So you can see here, I'm just dabbing, just trying to drop some, some pigment on that. It's great if you can keep the real, the, the model works in such a way where everything can rotate still, because that facilitates getting mud everywhere. All right, and then you can also do this with the rest. There's all kinds of things you can do. Back here, you can use the finger, you can use the brush just to get some of that. And it kind of, it's nice, is it, then it kind of, in doing that, this kind of works in the mud into the crevices, which is what would happen in, in real life over time, right? There you go, and then you can just remove. Now, because we haven't applied any product. To the to the the outsides of the road wheels, um, you know all of this should come off very easily, just by rubbing it with your finger. All right. Same thing here. All 
Okay, so let's go on and do the other the other road wheels. And then we'll have to go in and do the backs. You, know, you can never forget the backs of the road wheels. All right, so we'll do that. Now there I kind of messed up and I actually got some product, so we'll just wipe that off before we apply the pigment to it. But even if you did get a bit of pigment on it, not, not that bad. So you're, if you're like me, you've accumulated a fair number of these products over the years. Uh, and by and large, they keep. So it's nice to kind of come across new techniques like these where you can continue to leverage them. So let's go in and get some, pick up some pigment. And again, actually, I'm going to try switching up brushes here. This guy's a little bit. A little more precise. There we go. Yeah, I haven't quite killed this brush yet, so there's still has not as frayed out as the other one. Keeping your, your old brushes, there's always a good there's always a good use for them going forward. This is a perfect example of that. So just take this and blow it. Get, rid, get the pigments off. And then we'll go and do the front set of road wheels. So same type of thing, you're just kind of getting this in. Just getting it into all the little nooks and crannies. And again, um, so we did it on this one, but here we kind of missed. So let's paint, like literally just draw this product in there. Like so, like so. All right, so all the areas you might've missed. So you're probably asking, well, why wouldn't you do this from the start? Well, this takes a little bit more time, I think. Um, so you could you could use this method right right from the get-go, but um, it just takes takes more time. However, if you're working, some folks like to uh, do a specific vehicle, point in time vehicle, uh, and they have a reference shot and they want to replicate everything on it, um, the weathering on it as, as precisely as what's in the photo, then this might be a better method. Uh, because this gives you far more control than, than what we did earlier. But because we were looking for more of a random effect, we were a little bit less concerned about that. And that's one of the nice things about this is you kind of, you almost get lost in the process of it as you're building this up. You know, you're kind of, you're kind of letting, letting the process go where it may. Some people aren't comfortable with that, but I don't. I don't mind that so much. From time to time, here, let's get back in there. It's more in there. Pick up some more. Again, you can use your finger to kind of wipe off and just kind of work work it into some of the details and whatnot there. So some pigment is dropped in the back here, you can just kind of work that into the overall, the overall finish. Right. 
And it may seem that we're like we're using a lot of pigment, but we aren't really. We've just done, a, you know, maybe three scoops out of each one of the three colors I was using initially, um, and there's still, you know, there's still a little bit. Of, I did. I mean, to be fair, I did add another. I started off with two, and I did add another scoop of each off camera, just to build up a bit, but not not a lot. Uh, you just keep you just keep kind of working it in. Oh, another. Another area there we missed, so let's go back in. Maybe, maybe try. Let's try a different color just to break it up a bit. So we went dark mud. Let's do fresh mud. That's a little bit of a darker. Again, not much of a change, but a great way to use up some of these products. If you're like me, you've got a bunch of stuff. That, and the thing is, with these, you you buy one of these things, and they will last you a bit long time. And if you keep the lids on tight, they will last. They won't dry out. I've had some. Th I've had some of these things dry out on me, but I think that was an operator error on my part, where I didn't. Uh, I didn't close the. Uh, that's a hard one to get at because I'll just dab that in there. There you go, and you can see. I don't know if you can. That might be a good way to see. You can still see that. So there's some mud on there, but you still there's still some bolt detail there. That maybe you can do something with after the fact. You might be able to get a nice little wash in there to, to accentuate that even through the mud and the weathering, um, just to give it some nice scale effect. So again, it's not. You could certainly go heavier if you wanted to, where you're really caking on the mud. Um, but in this particular case, that's not really the effect we're looking for. And when you're doing this, so I'm using some of these colors here and these pigments. And again, we talked uh, at the start of the video, Dave and I talked about, you know, getting on, like he would work on some groundwork in the base. So you got to make sure that you record. So if you're going to do that, you need to make sure that you're keeping track of what specific pigments and mud effects and colors and mud splashes, etc., that you're using so that when, you know, so that what's on the tank actually incorporates well into the groundwork so that you're not, you know, there isn't a, a noticeable difference and then that, that just looks wrong, right? And again, it's not, you know, there's no, at this point, there's no, there's no real science to what you're doing. It's kind of more, this is more of a creative process, which I like. And I'm just kind of going in and touching up areas that I think I've missed. And if I flip this over, you'll see again, the fronts here have, uh, have not gotten the amount of mud that they probably should, just all in the name of consistency. So I'll put this on. Again, a slightly different color, but in the grand scheme of things, I'm not too concerned about that. This is more of a base for the pigment to sit on, and a little bit up top here. That's good. So that's the nice thing about this effect is that if you can go back in and make little touch-ups here and there, that will incorporate well into the overall finish. This is... There you have it. Now another thing, another interesting thing to do here is so this part. So not only can you use these products to create a base for the pigments that go on to, but you can also use them to add some tonal variety to the pigments. So I can use this fresh mud color, which is a slightly darker color. So I'm going to unload the paintbrush a little bit, and I can start, you know, just dabbing. Dabbing into the corners here. And the argument being that maybe the centripetal force of the road wheel continuing to turn would draw the moisture to the edges and the center, so the center might be a little bit drier, whereas the edges of the road wheel, or I guess in this case the either wheel, uh, might be a little drier. So we'll go back and hit those middle parts with some pigment. I'm just gonna get rid of the excess there. All right, go 
the back and take some off the. So you can see, so that, and you can, you know, you can set this down, let it completely dry, come back to it, add some of these things as you see fit, as your, as uh, you know, whatever looks good to you. And the other thing you can use these for is for doing um, some splashes. So let's do that. So what I'm going to do is I want to protect. So we're going to deal with splashes, and we're going to deal with the upper portions of the of the vehicle, and the rear. And the rest of the bottom here, you'll see that obviously, you know, obviously in this go around here, I, I paid more attention to this part of the of the hull as opposed to what I did on this side. But we'll, in a later video, we'll bring everything together and make that a little bit more consistent. Um, we'll look at doing how we build it up on the rear of the tank, uh, how we get dust on the top, hull uh, here, and, and how to make that look and, and add some some variations to that to make that look uh, as realistic as possible. Uh, and then there's also going to be mud. A little bit of mud on the turret. Again, you know, with crew getting up and off of the vehicle all the time, there's going to be mud in deposits, and uh, you know, dust in dry conditions, dust would come up and cover the top of the vehicle too. So you don't want to forget. If we did nothing here from this point onwards, and just this was the finished model, um, you know, there's there's kind of lack of consistency from the upper portion of the model here on up to what we have in, in uh, on on the sides. You know, the bogies and the road wheels and, and the side hull, the lower side hull. So. Very important to keep that uh, consistency going. So, so I think we'll uh, we'll let this dry. And again, don't forget to pay attention to the rear. So I haven't. Uh, I would need to do, you know, get into here as well. And do these pieces, and make sure that they look all consistent, similar to what I had done on the finished side. Um, and there you have it. So next time we'll look at doing some, uh, we'll look at paying attention to the other parts of the tank that aren't finished. Uh, and then maybe after that, maybe we'll get into a little bit of chipping. Um, you could do chipping prior to doing the mud, but again, there's no, you know, there's no fixed recipe for doing them. So yeah, so I think that, uh, that concludes our session this time. Um, oh, sorry. One more thing I want to show you guys. Same type of thing here. So we forgot all about the sprocket wheel here. So we can use the same type of thing, maybe, you know, let's go back to the dark mud color. And the same type of thing. We're just going to splash this on. Maybe, you know, leave that center piece and then go back and just stipple on. All right, like that. You can see, so there, right off the bat, you have some nice, so this will further get variation once it, once this dries up. And then again, you can go back and um, add uh, different uh, tones, different uh, fresh mud effects, uh, dark mud effects, etc., just to add some variation to it, and that'll all suck in nice into the, uh, into the, the pigment texture that you've created there, so. So, thanks, I hope... Uh, I hope I uh, hope everybody got a little something out of this and uh, certainly enjoyed uh, being with you here today. Thanks very much.